One day, between the time he moved out of the cave and into a high-rise apartment, man invented the city. In the year 1000, there were about a dozen cities of 100,000 people. By 1800, six times that many. And the more cities man built, the more problems there were. Housing, transportation, congestion, pollution. In 1925, one quarter of us lived in cities. Today, over half. By the year 2000, two-thirds of us will live in urban areas. Our cities will be twice the size they are today. We must build the equivalent of today's world on top of the one we already have. But it is not built yet. Now is the time to plan. This message brought to you by the United Nations Environment Program. Stockholm, Sweden, June 12, 1972. Mrs. Indira Gandhi, Prime Minister of India, arrived today to address the first United Nations Conference on the Human Environment. She was met by the Secretary General of the Conference, Mr. Maurice Strong, who escorted Mrs. Gandhi to the rostrum. It is clear that the environmental crisis which is confronting the world will profoundly alter the future destiny of our planet. No one amongst us, whatever our status, strength or circumstance, can remain unaffected. Stockholm, Sweden, June 16, 1972. An international group of young people assembled today in Sergels Torg Square to publicize what they called the worldwide competition to pollute. They awarded a series of prizes to the Olympic champions of pollution. The first award for each category is a lead medal, the second place is mercury, and the third cadmium. May we have the first award for automobile pollution? Come forward. The awards in the case of automobile pollution, lead medal to General Motors, USA. Yay! Special dishonorable mention for Toyota Motors of Japan. For 11 days in June 1972, Stockholm was a magnet for everyone concerned with the environment. 1,200 official delegates from 113 nations were in Stockholm for the first international conference on the human environment. The meeting, first proposed to the United Nations by Sweden and approved by the General Assembly in 1968, attracted worldwide attention. In four short years, the topic of the human environment had gone from the back pages of newspapers to make headlines on page one. On the first day, the official delegates assembled for the opening ceremonies in the Royal Opera House, where in the presence of King Gustav Adolf, they listened to the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Kurt Waldheim. Ladies and gentlemen, everything is of concern to everybody in our deeply interdependent world today. The iron rule remains. Our world is one, inseparable and interdependent. It is this world that is threatened by the impact of man's unplanned, selfish and ever-growing activities. No political system makes us immune to this threat. No level of economic development permits us to escape. We all face the challenge of equals, equally threatened, equally vulnerable. The crisis of human environment is a global crisis. The whole city of Stockholm was caught up in the conference. The conference symbol appeared everywhere and the pre-conference publicity brought thousands of unofficial observers from all over the world to Stockholm. The government of Sweden provided facilities for all of them. At Skarpneck, an abandoned airfield on the outskirts of town, it even set up a tent city for the many young people who could not pay for lodgings. Members of official delegations were supplied with new model Swedish cars. But this was a different kind of conference. The delegates were also offered the use of 200 bicycles, ecologically a more apt means of transportation. 
On the 5th of June, the delegates came together in the huge meeting hall of the Volkertshuis for the first plenary session of the official conference. I declare open the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment. The preparatory committee had chosen six major areas of deliberation. Human settlements, resource management, identification and control of international pollutants, development and the environment, education and information, and future organizational needs. As the first order of business, the delegates elected a president by acclamation. They chose the head of the Swedish delegation to the conference, Mr. Ingemann Bengtsson. The attention of the word is now directed at us in Stockholm. Let us therefore fulfill the justified expectations of the peoples of the world that this conference will lay a lasting foundation for the continuing efforts which we must undertake to ensure a better quality of life for all. The eyes and ears of the world were indeed trained on Stockholm. Radio and television reports from the conference reached millions around the world. The official meetings were held in three separate conference buildings. But Swedish radio and television also carried the scores of non-official events happening all over the city. But the theme of the conference, Only One Earth, was seriously compromised by a technical question. Because East Germany was not yet a member of any United Nations body, it was invited to be present without the right to vote. While West Germany, a member of the World Health Organization, was given a regular seat. Because of this, the Soviet Union and most Eastern European countries stayed away from Stockholm. Many delegations expressed grave concern. It is a matter for regret to us, indeed as it must be to all the delegations present here, that the USSR and some countries of East Europe are not present at this conference which concerns entire mankind. How can we talk seriously and realistically of the problems of resource use and of the problems of pollution in our only one earth without the representatives of these countries. The very fact that the conference began with 113 participating countries with very high level uh, delegations from those countries, this in itself represented a very significant step forward because this demonstrated more than any any anything else the real concern of the majority of countries in the world and those countries which did not participate in the conference did not remain away because they were disinterested in the issue they they remained away because of another political issue that didn't have any direct relevance to environment so those who were here were here because they were interested those who were not here were not here because they weren't interested in the in the environment issue but there were also a great many non-governmental groups interested in the environment. For them, the Swedish government set up a number of conference sites around Stockholm. Of these, the most prominent was the Environment Forum, where anyone could register and participate. Well, the Environment Forum is an unstructured um, conference, which makes it different from the United Nations Conference, in that people can get together and contribute what they want to contribute. And in order to enable them to contribute, there have been the workshops set up so that people who are interested in a particular subject can get together and um, discuss these subjects. A manifesto was brought together um, by a meeting of workshop leaders and was sent to Lady Barbara Ward Jackson and its ideas incorporated in a further document which is, is, is being presented to the United Nations, a, a non-government organization document um, which is longer than this and um, is being presented to the United Nations today. There would then be an increase in resource prices as a result of... There were also larger meetings at the forum. International panels of speakers debated environmental questions on everything from ecocide to the politics of pollution. The audience was encouraged to ask questions and add their own ideas. Just to amplify a little bit, the flush toilet, to take a homely example, is not political. When I, or a commissar in Moscow, or a capitalist in Tokyo, or a religious leader in India, flush our body wastes down into the public water supply, 
We are all equally guilty of stream pollution, regardless of the form of political organization we happen to live under. I would not say I am disappointed. I think under the circumstances, four years after politicians in particular and people in general uh, began to realize we were in the middle of an environmental crisis, I think Maurice Strong has done an absolute miracle of even getting people to come here and putting together a, uh, this sort of conference. At the same time, we have to be extremely critical of the point of view that simply turning the old economic crank faster uh, is going to somehow close the gap between the rich and the poor. We've tried that particular game. Uh, we've tried it now for 20 years or so, and proportionally the rich keep getting richer and the poor do not catch up.